I met a gypsy. What was it like meeting Trav? Because I feel like that's probably a um, a turning point in your career in terms of like the way that you could progress. Yeah, look, <clears throat> Travis. Travis was uh, a bit of a childhood hero. Just loved. Uh, I never liked. Um, I, I never wanted to say have image or anything like that. I just loved doing things and and not trying to look like the cool kid or not trying to be famous and i always saw travis as just the guy that killed it might have been a bit goofy or whatever but he just did it because he loved it and he was ultra talented and and amazing at everything and you know some other guys were sort of a bit too image orientated with a brand or whatever and i just thought yeah that's awesome what he's doing and he just kills it at everything is and you picked that up early from him like you you noticed that in him early yeah i guess it just because it was i you know it felt like a similar upbringing a similar person to what i maybe what i was or what i felt like i wanted to be so yeah yeah you know, just some people you just kind yep. of see him and you think ah oh, that's oh you know. for sure there was dudes that wanted to be brian deegan yeah there was dudes that want to be travis Pastrana. yeah i certainly didn't break it down like that back then but it just i saw him and thought oh that's cool i want to be like that you know do just do cool stuff and <laughs> and just not care about anything else and um yeah to actually i remember i can't remember how long before i joined nitro and met travis but i remember thinking at one point oh, how awesome would it be to be sponsored by red bull and, and ride for nitro circus you know just thinking about travis's position and then uh, within a couple of years i was there had had the sponsorship and met him and uh, i think it was 2011 finally got to 10 10 or 11 anyway one of those years finally got onto aussie uh regional nitro tour and it was it was amazing it was a bit you know it was a bit sort of shy and uh, a bit quiet because there was just a whole group of people that i hadn't met yet and but yeah he was just so humble down to earth and just a legend and um you know always so energetic but everyone just feeds off his energy when he's around yeah you? um and he's just yeah so helpful he's always wanted to do fun things and I think it was, um, I feel like it was in 2010. Ah, oh, no, 11, 2011. And at the end of that Nitro tour, he was like, oh, does anyone want to come back to my place and learn some tricks? And I was just like, oh, you know, <laughs> straight yes, there. And a lot of people had jobs and stuff. And I just kind of, um, I think I was still in seasonal drilling at the time and didn't really have a job anywhere that I had to be. So I was just like, yeah, jump straight over there and, that's when I, he had a, I don't know, just the way he thinks is good. Like, oh, you know, maybe think of three things you want to get out of this trip, three tricks you want to learn. And um, double flip and started playing with a special flip and I forget what else. But the double flip just with the 450, it was just sort of something that appealed to me. And he's like, I reckon if you can do a double flip, you know, with the your bag of trips, you, tricks, you'll be able to win X games. And it's like, yep, good one. So that started me on... Uh, started uh the whole, whole whole double flip trip so i was just confused yeah, about yeah. the dates then yeah. i feel like it might have been end of 2010 because i'm pretty sure i went to x games in 11 yeah <clears throat> 11 was a a big year a lot happened that year so but um yeah it was amazing he's just so helpful you know let me stay at his house and just he had a couple of cars he just was so helpful so he's got a couple of mates that always help and kind of felt at home that like hubert was um a bit of a mechanic bit of a machine operator and i kind of loved doing that stuff too so yeah i, I could know, see just, you boys get along pretty good actually yeah and so i kind of felt felt really at home and i could help out when i could and um yeah and still ride and have a blast and learn some crazy tricks and and try to avoid getting hurt <laughs> was were you the first dude to double flip a four stroke no no um Scott Murray, Scott Murray, and I don't know, Six was doing a 250, wasn't he? Scott yeah, he Murray was, was a, doing a 450. Yeah, okay. Because Trav did, uh, he was always double flipping two strokes. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, but he could double flip anything, I think. Yeah, yeah, fair. <laughs> <laughs> like the the whole the triple flip. Um, I remember uh, went out there because he'd got Tom and myself out there. He, he had this idea, had a ramp, and he just wanted, and in, and when bag jumped, started making those oh, big yeah. box airbags he's like oh you know want to see what we'll see what we can do and tom had really good aerial awareness i just had the 
the balls to give it a crack and Travis was just sort of brilliant at everything but he would um, after a few ramps he's like oh 250 oh, maybe I'll try the 450 and then like oh it's a bit heavier you know, I'll try the light 125 and he's just like fifth gear on the 125 what third gear on the 450 and <laughs> he'd just try I think he even tried the 500 he's um oh the RM Dilla yeah he's <laughs> just uh, so talented it was mind blowing really he, around him. he's a force dude yeah like he's one of the more bizarre I've met a lot of people He's one of the more bizarre and awesome people I've ever met in my life, man. Like, yeah. from the how nice he is to everybody, how gnarly he is, and how, like, staunch he is about stuff. Like, he knows what he wants, and he knows the way to get things done. And, you know, yeah, like, he, yeah. he's the nicest guy ever, but he runs his own program. And, yeah. you know, like, he's got a... There's a combination of factors that go on with that guy that just make him like the most cool and unique dude, eh? Yeah, well, uh, it's it was interesting getting over there and meeting his parents too because it kind of it gives shed a lot more light yeah, on why right. he is, why he is, but um, how he is, how he is. So uh, his mum, uh, just a like, really kind, loving Christian lady, so like, I guess very respectful and sort of has good morals and... Um, then the dad is a um, just a like an animal of a drill sergeant in the military in the army. But like in the army, you learn respect and you learn um, yeah yeah. There's a lot of rules and uh, I forget the word you, you like you discipline need, discipline. Yeah, a lot of discipline, but you're hard as nails. So he's just had like all these. He learned. He's so so respectful, so uh, like intelligent, smart, and you know um, helpful. But then he's just he's an animal when he when he had to train his, his dad was like yeah if you want to try <laughs> you got to try hard so he uh yeah good good combination amazing to amazing to be around if you enjoyed this content please like and subscribe and to listen to the full three-hour podcast search gypsy tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below gypsy gang